craft that vision into like sculpt it. It doesn't, you're not going to get a vision within five minutes. You've got to sculpt that vision. And that's, in my opinion, probably the number one determinant of success in life. And also though, particularly when you come online to make money with websites, I'd say it is very different to bricks and mortar world because we teach a portfolio approach, right? So your vision's got to encompass how does that look? James Schramko here. Welcome back to my podcast. This is episode 931 and we're going to be digging into mindset. For this, I've brought along my good friend, Matt Rad. He's part of a, a two-person combo. Normally you have Matt and Liz Rad, but Matt's here today. Welcome to the show. G'day, James. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, what an awesome topic. When Liz isn't there, I can imagine she's probably flying around the countryside on a motorbike, uh, you know, yeah. some wild adventure. Yeah, that, that was in the old days. She's actually um, moving away from the motorbikes these days. With, well, she's still a, a, an amazing downhill mountain biker, though. It, it's I, I can just beat her, but luckily she's not here to hear me say that. <laughs> well, I imagine your kids now doing all these activities, Ninja Warrior stuff. You're a super active household. Of course, part of this is possible because you're not spending 60 hours a week on the computer. No. You, Matt and Liz Rad, run a fantastic business, eBusiness Institute, helping people build out website portfolios, like buying them, doing them up, monetizing them. That's a strange word, monetize, but being able to turn those websites into profitable portfolios. Every single week, I see in my inbox an email of a successful student of yours. Like, I know you're generating a lot of students. I've known you for many years. You used to speak on stages. You and I worked together for a few years to get you more online. Your online thing has taken off. It gives us a great opportunity to access some information here. And the, and the big key topic for today is why do some students succeed more than others? Because you've got a big student portfolio. Overall, I'd say as an outsider, it certainly looks like the bulk of your students are actually succeeding. And then there's some who just go stratospheric. The reason I'm just saying from an outsider and overall, because Every time I refer someone off to your program, which I often do because I don't teach how to go and look for a website to buy. I don't teach how to build a website. I, I used to do that in 2008. You have far more patience than I do. That, that's our passion. I, I, that's actually my favorite topic. That's great. But I send people off and overwhelmingly they come back and say, thanks so much for the referral. This is a great program. I'm loving it. But the thing that's really been interesting to me is – Generally, my students are fairly intermediate. I'm going to say sort of put an intermediate label. Now, of course, like any great bell curve, some of them are at the beginner stage of intermediate and some of them have, you know, they're veterans of the industry. They've been around for years and years and, and done a lot of, you know, they can code out and program and they're technically very savvy, but they still want to come into the program, which it seems like starts off fairly simple. I'm not going to say basic, but it starts with not too much prerequisite required or no prerequisite required and then moves people through to whatever level they can get to. Now, I know how advanced you are in the background and I know some of your previous students and some of your contacts have built deca-million-dollar web businesses. Love those ones. Yeah, we do love those. But why is it that some of them go out and from scratch generate six or seven-figure content site incomes and some of them don't connect the dots as easily like what is causing that is it something you can identify and how can we bring that to the table in this show so that we can learn from it and use this in our own business yeah and, and thanks so much for having me on james because this is the sort of thing that liz and i are really passionate about and yourself we you know when we catch up and as coaches and i know we're kind of like i was saying to you before you know we're that private boutique coach we personally coach people too six, seven and eight figure website portfolios over the what the last 10 years. And now we do sit back and look at what's making the difference here with these guys that are really successful. And we've known for a long time, one of the big things that we, that people don't realize what we do. And I've noticed you've started, you, you do this a lot. And when we coached with you, we talk about it is mindset. And I think that is actually the key. We teach everyone exactly the same skills like you do. And it comes down to mindset, like anything in life. And 
I think that's something we're really passionate about now. You know, Liz is even teaching a lot more in depth, just purely around mindset. That's why I'm excited to be here to give your listeners some insight into uh, what's making the difference with these students who are successful. Because like you said, we have literally total beginners that you've seen now who, you know, have sitting on million dollar website portfolios and stuff. And you go, well, why, why is that lawyer? Who, because we help people transition out of, you know, professional jobs. They've never been online before. After a couple of years with us, so it's not a get rich quick thing. What's made the difference? And I think one of the big things that Liz and I were talking about this is humility. They actually listen to us as coaches, and like we did with you. Look at look at the dramatic imp- Look at the what? What do you call it? A three hundred and sixty turnaround for me and Liz when we started chatting to you and realised. I think James is right here. We, we need to get off this stage thing and go online. And we just went all in. And we remember, we just listened to you. We did exactly what you said on those calls. And we didn't have to do very many calls. And it worked. You know, it worked like, what, 100%. Uh, and it's the same with our clients. I think that humility to listen to your coach and not only that, to take action and then also not take it personally when it doesn't work because it doesn't always work. So things go wrong. And I think that was a, when Liz and I look at it, if we broke it down, I think we'll call that first big success mindset thing that we see, which I know probably a bit different to what people are expecting is, yeah, humility. I love that one. You know, I think it's probably hard for some people to be exposed to a situation where they can realise that mindset is the differentiator. But I, I remember as early as when I started my sales career, I used to sit there in the, in our little showroom. We had this very small showroom. It could only fit two cars in the first place I worked. And there were seven salespeople. There were seven. And there was a couple of months and it was in my very first – I was young. I, was, I think I was 23 years old. And in about three months in to my first sales job where there's seven of us in the same tiny little showroom with a limited supply of customers, and three months in was a month where I sold – more than all the other six combined in that single month and and i'm think, thinking okay well we're we're in the same geographic location we're selling the same product from the same showroom with the same boss with the same desks pens uh, everything was the same except for us the differentiator and that's when i had this fantastic opportunity to benchmark from a, an extremely similar peer group to say well there must be something going on here uh, certainly the owner of the business uh, was aware of it he'd come in screaming at them and then they'd all look at me like we're going to kill you <laughs> I remember that I had to acknowledge that I was starting from scratch I was I was actually super excited about learning from scratch because I just felt like well there's, there's all this one way to to explore now what impressed me so much when when I was working with you and Liz to change your business it's like you're so knowledgeable and so experienced and so credible in what you do but for you to not bring well what's the opposite of humility you know belligerence arrogance uh know-it-all all all that stuff to to just park that and to say you know what i'm just going to listen i can so relate to that because for the, the last three or four weeks at the time of recording this I enrolled myself into a live cohort class where I'm learning a new technique and I'm learning from a 25-year-old and a 31-year-old and I was actually teaching the thing they're teaching me now in 2009 at my live events. So we're talking about 13 years ago. One of my teachers was 12 years old when I was (laughs) teaching this. So I basically had to park it all in the in the back and just I'm just showed up with an open mind, a beginner mindset, and I'm like, what can I learn from these new, young, savvy, hip people in this market, and not overwrite all of this with my own knowledge and my own biases and my own way of doing things. I'm here to learn. I'm here to transform. I'm here to improve, and. I think it's actually harder when you have a deep knowledge on a topic than if you've never been. Like when I started surfing, I didn't have a deep knowledge of it. So I knew I was a beginner and there was no option to be arrogant because I didn't know anything. This is the funny thing and it might come up later. I gave myself 10 years 
10 years down the track, I'll allow myself to even have an opinion about it because I know nothing. And time and time again, I've seen this with my own students. Some of the people who have hired me to coach them are seven or eight or even nine figure businesses. And they come with the most simple questions and the most, I'm like, it's astounding how they're not afraid to ask a question that other people might deem foolish. So I think that speaks to your topic of humility. Does that resonate? Absolutely. Yeah. And, and actually, I will say this, James, you know, some of the students that from your community that have come onto our program, and it's really cool. Like some of them are very advanced. Like I wouldn't call them intermediate. These are seriously advanced people. And what I love, though, they, you know, they've got your attitude. They're, they're very humble. And I think you just said it well, a beginner mindset. They're open to what we teach. And I often get on a phone call and personally ring them and say, hey, I, I know who you are from James. You sure you want to do this course? Because we start out with the foundations and then we work through. And, and they go, no, Matt, we... I need to go in with a clean slate and learn the foundations because what you guys are doing, we come from an entrepreneurial background of buying and selling businesses. And so we come in with a plan with it and it's not always about SEO and stuff like that at the beginning. And it's really cool with your guys and all our successful people. I think you, you nailed it. There is a beginner mindset. And, and it's really interesting as you know, we've got a lot of say, people who've never done this before you know they're they're in my age group like in the 50s and above you know and they want to retrain and so they have to come into it with a beginner mindset and I think that's what makes the difference because it's like a clean slate they listen to Matt and Liz they do what we say and surprise surprise it works and so a year or two later they go wow this we, we actually have a joke in our private community it's a running joke because one of my mentors who I'm going to talk about in a minute who put me on to the next point is Arnold Schwarzenegger. You know how he's a bit cocky and likes to joke. So I do the same thing. And, I, and the running joke in our community is Matt's always right. And because I've normally got Liz next to me, you know, I like to stir her and say, just remember who's always right here. Everyone takes it on board. And often we all joke and say, yeah, Matt was right. If you just did that, it would work. And because people go off tra chasing bright, shiny objects, particularly as you know, online, but I love seeing our clients when they're willing to learn and that means they get out and take action, which as we know, that's obviously a must. When we're talking mindset, that's kind of an overriding thing. You've got to do stuff as well. But what we're trying to drill down is what actually makes the difference? What can you practically implement? Is if you're listening to this, is seriously, is humility. Just go, you know what? I need to learn the basics or make sure, listen to smart people who've gone ahead and done it and then take some action but also one story that I might share with everyone humility and Liz Liz asked me to um say this to everyone we're scientists by our training that we started out studying zoology you know red kangaroos and stuff and one thing you're taught in science is everything's an experiment at the beginning you don't know whether it's going to work and so when you get online there's a lot going on. It's not like traditional businesses. There's a lot that can go right, but there's also, let's not kid ourselves, there's a lot that goes wrong as well. It's not always easy. And so humility is also about not taking things personally when it doesn't work out. And I think the best example is, and it's so lucky, you know, 10 years, we're still here. When Liz first got online, she started an ebook, and it didn't work. It was really tough at the beginning. She wrote this thing herself. And she was trying to tweak it and get it to work. And she nearly gave up. And she was verging on taking it personally. Now she did this massive big launch and every, all these courses you do say it's going to make you lots of money and all that sort of stuff. And it was a complete failure. There was like literally crickets, you know, didn't sell a single thing. But she didn't take it personally. This is the humility thing. She just goes, no, I know this can work. So she kept working at it. And then luckily she had a mentor it was with one of their coaches, actually. And this girl said to Liz, you know what? I think you're onto something there. That's going to work. Just stick at it. And it was just that one phone call. So Liz did. And also not taking it personally. She stuck at it. And then she got it to the point where it broke even. And that's when another mentor said, you know what? Once you start breaking even, that means you're on a winner. So then that spurred Liz on and then from that point on she got that site very quickly from that break even all she needed was one person to say to her look that can work 
that site went on to uh, very quickly started making about five grand a month net profit then after that. So that was in the good old days of using Google ads to drive traffic to the product. And, you know, the rest is history. But if Liz hadn't been humble enough and hadn't listened to that particular coach, I think we wouldn't be here today. And obviously it's hugely exciting then. We can remember the first, we got a thousand dollar check off, remember ClickBank. I remember they used to send out checks. This is an American company and they send it in the mail to you and we photocopied it. It's still sitting in my in tray to this day, that first thousand dollars we earned passively, but that was a site we nearly gave up on and walked away from. I used to walk down to the bank in my lunch hour when I had a job with my ClickBank checks. And I remember the teller at the National Australia Bank looking it up and going, is this even a real company? Like they're thinking it's a fake bank, but it was tremendously tremendously motivating to take that check down and bank it. I knew I was building something that that had a future. And regarding the, the humility, one thing I've noticed from doing my course, I sometimes I submit my homework. Yep. You know, I'm hoping that I've nailed it and that I've got it just right. And sometimes the instructor will give a couple of, well, some feedback on where it could be improved or whatever. And you can choose at that point. Do I take it personally and fight back and just bristle up and like, no, actually you're wrong because this or the other, or do you say, you know what? Thank you for that. I appreciate it. That feedback reveals the truth of the thing. And I agree with you. It could be improved. And thank you for providing me the next steps on how I can adjust it for the next iteration, for the next version of it. We're faced with a lot of choices and I think it, it can be hard to humble. I, I'm, and I'm going to reveal something really funny. Yeah. In the past, I've definitely, uh, some people, whether they're interview guests or people having me on there, they've, they've thought maybe I'm a little bit too cocky or whatever. I actually, for some time there, I wrote Be Humble on a post-it note and stuck it behind my camera because I am actually reasonably humble in life, but sometimes you bring on that confidence mask to the work that you do. And I think that's probably a little bit of a, a throwback from me being in an extraordinarily difficult industry where I had a lot of weight on my shoulders at a young age. It was war. I went off to war, you know, business war. I was trying to survive and I had to put on that front. So over the years, I've been able to strip that back and become a better version of myself. So that's great. I'm going to put that down. Point number one, if you want to be successful, no matter what you're doing, whether you're taking up a new hobby like mountain bike riding, whether you're trying to build out a portfolio of profitable websites uh, or build an agency or whatever, it's great to be humble, to approach it with a beginner's mindset and to actually be okay with getting feedback from someone who knows. Okay, now that doesn't mean getting feedback from your mum. No offense, mum, because I know she listens to this podcast, but not they're not always super contextually positioned to give you the best feedback. But someone who you've paid to instruct you probably is. Okay. Yeah, that's right. And and I love how you've added in there that beginner mindset. I think you summarize that brilliantly. That is perfect. Love it. Okay. Well, let's move on to the second trait that you've seen across the board with your most successful students. But my favorite and all our personal coaching clients know I'm huge on this because this is the number one thing that's probably made the biggest difference in my life and in Liz's as well. But, you know, I, I come from very humble beginnings and have done, you know, been lucky to do well in life, but I say lucky because of this one thing, and that is setting a strong vision. If I look across our student community and I know in my life, and also, as you know, James, we hang out personally with some very, very successful business people. And you know, these are older guys. It would definitely have to be coming down to that strong vision, vision of what you want. And you got to get really clear about what you want, not just with your websites, but in life. It's got to feed back from there. It's got to be a strong personal vision. And I also think this sounds kind of slightly off topic, but it's not, is... One of the reasons Liz and I are so successful in our marriage, you know, we're, we work together 24-7. It's very rare that she's not with me here. Um, she's letting me do my own thing today. That's, that, but, but we work together 24-7 and people spin out about that. The whole reason is because we have a shared vision. You know, we create this vision. We, work, we literally work on this vision of ours for our life, our family. You mentioned our family, our kids. Our kids are very involved with us. They know my kids they know our personal vision, so do all our students. 
So we work on it literally every day. We, we're talking about it. Are we on path? And I think where I learned that many years ago, okay, I, I listened to, you know, like Tony Robbins and those guys back at we did and Jim Rowan, remember those sort of guys, but it was mainly from Arnold Schwarzenegger. I got into, you know, bodybuilding to fix up my life because I wasn't, I was very insecure as a young guy. And when I was 17, I left the farm and moved into the city. And I know this sounds, you know, here we are talking about making millions of dollars off websites and stuff, but literally that was a catalyst for me because when I was in that gym, I'd look on the wall and there's these pictures of Arnold Schwarzenegger. Now, this is back in 1988. I didn't know much, too much about him. I'm thinking, who's this guy? I've seen him in movies, but I started reading his story. He literally came to America with nothing, but he had a vision, a really, really strong vision. He talks about it everywhere. And that's why I talk about it everywhere. And I think, you know, you, you look at what Arnie achieved in his life, you know, one of the world's most famous actors, became a politician, won Mr. Olympia seven or eight times, you know, world's best bodybuilder. All those things came from a vision. And he used to say every year he would set about 10 to 12 goals and you just go and achieve them. You know, it will be done. So Liz and I are like that, but you have a sense of fun with it. And that's part of our vision is to make life fun. But when we look at our students, it's exactly the same. I see it repeated everywhere. They know what they're doing and they know where, what they want and they know why they're building these websites. It's for lifestyle reasons, exactly what you teach. So they can you know, earn more, work less. Most of our students just want to work less. You know, they, they want to get out of their full-time jobs. So they have a vision. And what we do is, and what I suggest to anyone listening is craft that vision into like sculpt it. It doesn't, you're not going to get a vision within five minutes. You've got to sculpt that vision. And that's, in my opinion, probably the number one determinant of success in life. And also though, particularly when you come online to make money with websites, I'd say it is very different to bricks and mortar world because we teach a portfolio approach, right? So your vision's got to encompass how does that look? And you need role models of success. That's the other big part of vision, which I could talk about as well. And I know you're big on this as well, aren't you? With your students, as, like in your community and in your personal life, same thing. Like you were saying, when you started out, you've got to have that vision of success. I get goosebumps thinking about this. <laughs> I mean, this is huge. I want, to, I want to tell you, uh, it was about 1995 or 1996. I was the number one salesperson in the whole of Australia for BMW. And that was out of an external driver. I needed, I needed money. You know, I, I, my first child came along when I was 24. So, you know, when I was number one in Australia, I had a, I had a baby coming. I needed to, because I was thinking, okay, two incomes back to one income, but we're adding an extra person. The math means I have to double my income. So I went and got a job in sales because it was the only way that I could think of where I could massively increase my income and get leverage. So I started to understand leverage better. But anyway, there's this lovely, lovely guy came in and he looked at a brand new five series that was being launched around this time. And he was so impressed with the way that I approached him that he ordered one for him, one for his wife, and then he ordered another sports car as a third car. And then when I dropped, dropped him back or I dropped something over to his office, he came out with this little um, box. And in the box were cassettes. These, this is for, for older generation people. This is the way we used to consume information products. And one of the cassettes was Dr. Maxwell Maltz talking about psycho-cybernetics. That's right, yeah. Now I listened to all of these cassettes on my drive home and, and to work. And this is where I first connected the science of it, that this guy was a plastic surgeon and he had discovered that even after he fixes someone's appearance, they're still unhappy, so he figured it must be mental. And he was the one that, that really made it popular to have visualisation. So, you know, we've heard of things like mind movies and all of that stuff now, but this, is, this goes back to, to at least I think the 60s. Yeah. He did experiments with throwing darts or shooting basketballs and a lot of elite sports people are going to use visualisation. When you see your favourite player or team uh, with their headphones on before they compete, they're probably listening to a patterned sort of uh, meditation or a, a visualisation. Since that time, I've used visualisation as a part of my life. I can always see things happening before they happen. I sit here in my own house that I visualized decades ago. It was my dream one day to live in a nice house near the beach and to work with people I want to work with and to have a great life. 
and it's become real and it can take time. This is something that will probably come up as well. But the visualization thing, I'm absolutely adamant that it works. I'll tell you one more story just to reinforce this. Many, many years ago when I started surfing, I was probably my second year of surfing. I've been surfing about eight and a half years now. I ordered a board from this uh, legendary board shaper in the United States who a friend of mine put me on to. And, and the type of board I ordered was a big wave gun. And it was absolutely ludicrous for me as a beginner surfer, uh, you know, who could hardly last 30 minutes out in the surf without getting exhausted to be ordering a, a board that is surfed in waves that are 8 to 12 feet. But I did. And then it, it arrived and they kind of laughed at me at the surf shop. It's a lot like that old um, copywriting headline, you know, like they laugh when I sat down at the piano. Yeah. Anyway, I put it in a board bag and shoved it in my garage and I just left it for about seven years. Yeah. And uh, last year when the winter swell came, I pulled it out of the garage and I waxed it up and I paddled it out at, at uh, my local beach and I took off on some 10 foot waves on this board. And, you know, the exhilaration was, you know, partly because of the, the death defying yeah. thing of paddling out. Like the waves are so big and scary when, you, when it's that big that it really gets your pulse going and you think, I could die. I could die, but hopefully I don't. Spoiler alert. I didn't die. But <laughs> no. anyway, the real thing that just gave me that inside satisfaction was, you know what? I saw this moment seven years before this. I saw this moment and I built to it. And the foundations took a long time and it's not easy, but it's achievable. And you know, much like a few, few episodes ago, I told the story of my first barrel. From the day I started surfing, my dream and my goal, my vision was to be in a barrel. And when it finally happened, I was so overcome with emotion. I, like, I literally just wept. <laughs> it was like, I know this works. If you really think about something a lot and you want it, you know, you can move towards it because it directs your thoughts to it, whether it's consciously or even subconsciously. It's trying to, you're, you are a goal seeking mechanism. And the way you program your brain is very powerful. And using visualization has worked for me. And it could be as simple as closing your eyes and just imagining what things are, are going to be like and then getting excited about that. And that's what will actually move you through all the crappy, annoying, pesky, inevitable setbacks that happen along the way. And what, one of the things I'd love to give, James, to people is a technique that Liz and I use because we come from a very like poor background, like on living on farms and stuff. When I first moved into Sydney, I always wanted to be an entrepreneur and be wealthy because of the way I grew up. But I had no role models of success. I didn't, I didn't know any millionaires or anything like that. So I want to give everyone the number one technique that I use in helping to get that strong vision because everyone knows you should have a vision and that stuff. But I used to think, well, how the hell do you do it? I, I'm not that great at visualising. Turns out I am. But basically I'd made a rule in my head I only need to meet or see one person that's done what I want and that's enough for me to know it can be done. That's my vision. So what I've done over the years and, and Liz as well, and I think our students do really well, and you'll notice this is one of the big reasons you actually mentioned at the beginning of this webinar why Liz and I are so passionate about sharing our success stories is because in our lives, particularly when you're online, because it's such an unusual way to make money for most people, you need role models of success. So go out there and look for people like James or our students. Look at these interviews on like James's podcast. And that's what I, I've made it a mission, James. Since I was 18, when I first moved into Sydney, I was always looking around for millionaires, like millionaire business people. I actually ended up meeting heaps of millionaire lawyers and PAYG type people, people who had jobs, because I was in the city. I lived in a beautiful place called Redfern, if anyone knows Redfern back in the I 90s. I used to work there in the Mercedes dealership. In the late 80s, pretty rough place. But just down the road was some of Sydney's most expensive suburbs. But one of my strategies, and the reason I do this, one of my key strategies is get around people who... I would like to implement into my personal vision, like either read their books or listen to their interviews with them or get to know them personally. That's basically the three big things I've done. And out of that, I've been able to create my own personal life vision, which as you heard, 
I know it sounds kind of pretty intense. It's not, but we literally work on that every day. We just kind of, it's fun. We check in with each other. We're doing the right thing here. And it's funny, over the last 30 years that I've been doing that, so I'm in my 50s now, it's like you said, James, also this strong vision is not just about, hey, how do I make millions of dollars out of websites? It's also in my health. So, you know, I hang around now guys in their 60s who are super fit. Like they're actually, some of them are ex-athletes. They're also incredibly successful entrepreneurs who've just decided their vision is we want to be fit into our 60s. So we luckily, we live in Queensland in a community where there's a lot of guys like that. And also in my relationship. So with Liz, so we've always looked at people who are older than us and gone, how are they doing it in their lives? It might be my mum and dad or Liz's mum and dad or also business people we know, you know, how have they been married for 30 years? And so what we do is then we bring those ideas into our vision. And for you listening to this, you presumably you've got a vision to, you know, earn more and work less. Well, you need role models of success. And please remember too, don't think you need heaps. For me in my life, I only needed one example. And admittedly, I picked a pretty extreme example, which was Arnold Schwarzenegger. You know, he's off the bell curve in terms of what he's going to achieve in life. But I just looked at the essence of what he did. Started with nothing. Couldn't even speak English, a bit like my dad. My dad, my stepdad's an immigrant here in Australia and had an impossible name, yet he achieved all his dreams in his life. And basically, 30 years later, I can say I've done the same. You know, it's like what you said. We, we sit in a house now. I wrote about this house that we live in. We live in a very nice place. But I wrote about that 30 years ago. It was sitting in my wallet for all that time, you know, and, and now we live it every day. We sit out on our back veranda and, you know, it's like you're living in a resort. It's pretty cool. And we just manifested that, I guess, from visualisation. And it works. And I see that work across our community, I think, looking for those role models of success is what lets you set your own strong vision. And then like you said, James, having that strong vision gets you through all the crap in life because the crap's going to still be there. But if you've got that vision, it means you stick to it. I think it, like I accidentally got exposed to all these successful business owners because I was in the luxury car segment. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. From 1995 through to 2008, I was dealing with the top sports people and politicians and billionaires and business owners. That was an overwhelming trait. They owned businesses. And a lot of them took me under their wing. They liked me and they invite me out to their boat or to their factory. Or one guy invited me to his football stadium to watch a match. You know, I went there and I went into the, the VIP box and I expected it to be, you know, packed with 100 people. It was just him and me. And this was Aussie, Aussie John Simons, right? Oh, yeah. And he invited me out to Aussie Stadium. And we just chatted through the, the whole match. And because the team for the, the suburb of where my dealership was playing, he thought I might be interested in watching. He was a super nice guy, super nice. So, yeah, being surrounded by people will definitely influence your benchmark. Like if you're sitting around every day in a shared household, drinking and smoking and bitching about the government then you're not going to go places because you just become absorbed in that environment so you do need to expose yourself to the right environment and the right people and i will say this one caveat this one fascinated me mm -hmm. for every success or insta life that you see or whatever there's definitely going to be cracks or flaws or yeah a yang to the yin right it, it blew me away but but often when I found, you know, I climbed the mountain and met the mentor. I've even flown countries to spend an afternoon with people who I revered and read books of. You often find there's shortcomings or an, another side to it. So pick and choose the bits you want and leave the bits you don't is my advice on that. Well, Liz and I actually teach that too. We, we share that. We, we've done exactly the same as you. In our journey, we've always networked and hung out with very successful business people because our background was man owning and buying and selling manufacturing businesses. So we'd get into manufacturing networks. And through that, we got to meet some really successful business owners. And then, of course, when we got into M&A and buying and selling professionally, we met all basically all the top buyers in Sydney, very high net worth. But what we noticed was we'd get invited to parties with them or to rugby matches and same sort of thing. But we noticed, hey, we had a couple of, personal mentors in that group private individual men who are worth tens of millions of dollars but 
you know, cool guys, but the marriages weren't perfect. Let's just say that. So we go, okay, we're not going to take that part into our personal vision. And so we just chopped and changed. And then, you know, we'd meet guys though, who were, we found about 50% of these ultra high net worth or very high net worths had successful marriages. So, but we hung out with both. And like you said, we just picked and choose and created our own personal life vision. And same, we'd look at their kids and we'd meet their kids and we'd hang out. We go, oh, yeah, what do you teach your kids? What, what are your kids like? And we'd get to meet them and we go, okay. We'd even visualize how we want our kids to be, you know, family. I know that sounds pretty full on like, hey, you are really affecting your future here. But we did it. You know, our kids are how we visualized 30 years ago. I think what you're saying here is that you can create your own version of what success means yeah because i feel like it's really very bad idea to to make success equals bill gates or elon musk or richard branson or steve jobs it's like it's not a realistic version of success and you also hinted at this success goes beyond just money it's health it's family it's relationships and stuff so to put a label on the third attribute of what makes students successful, we, we kind of covered this in a way. It sort of went there with my surfboard story, but certainly I, I believe this is true and I'd love you to just introduce this third bullet point. So directly flows on from having a strong vision and it's exactly what you said with your surfboard story. Like it takes time to create that personal vision. And so you must, when we look at our successful students and in our lives and you know, talking to you, and I know you agree with me, is having that long-term perspective, just turning up every day, consistency. We have a saying because I got this off Arnold Schwarzenegger is, you know, I just looked at what he did, reps, reps, reps. You just turn up. And if you fail, like going back to number one, humility, you just go, you know what? That was just one of those reps that didn't work. So I'll go back to reps, reps, reps. But having that long-term perspective is really important in success in life. And I will throw this out there, James, for those of you that wanna build a portfolio of, of money-making websites, you definitely need a long-term perspective. This is not a thing, I know it looks like you can just jump out there and buy one and be a winner, you can. But if I look across our successful students, those that have the long-term perspective to turn up and make their vision come true and do the humility thing, I think that's what works best, that consistency. Look, I only have to look at my own life to see examples of that. Like at one point in my life when I woke up in the morning, I'd get into my uh, V8 burnt orange Ford 351 ute and I'd drive across the Harbour Bridge to, uh, to the timber yard and for the day I would be unloading wet softwood out of a 20-tonne shipping container for $2.75 per hour when I was about 18. Yeah. I remember a few weeks into the job, I calculated that I actually spent more in food and petrol than I was even earning. So I had to quit because <laughs> I was losing money. It was very, very difficult work. And and then fast forward to life now, it's a very different situation. But the, the main quotient there is time. And one of my best mentors taught me that life is a marathon, not a sprint. Oh, yeah. I'm going to just sort of drop this big one out there. One of the reasons I switched my brand from super fast business to my personal brand is I don't think speed is everything that people make it out to be. I think if I were to, it doesn't sound great, but I would say super sustainable business would be the goal these days. Everything I do is with the idea of sustainability because as a coach, and this is why I cover mindset, I hear a lot of people coming to me saying, I'm burnt out, I'm exhausted, I'm bored. Uh, I wish it could be just like when in the old days when it was just me and a couple of customers. People who focus on the short term often end up in ruin. And I love this great saying, the candle that burns twice as bright lasts half as long. Yeah, that's right. Um, so I would say if you want to set yourself up for success in a in a business perspective then have a longer time frame on it be more realistic about how long it's going to take and i will say this from personal experience in 10 years from now just about every single aspect of your life could be completely different to what it is now i'm talking about where you live who you're with 
um, the relationship you have with your children, the people you're doing business with, the business model you do, the hobbies and uh, that you do. Ten years ago, I wasn't surfing. And I can tell you, like, nothing has changed my life as much as that. To imagine that I was at one point in my life not a surfer, I mean, that is just mind-blowing. But 10 years is a very realistic time frame to have anything you want out of life. And that's why I'm so happy to have had you on this show talking about it because you and I have both seen this same attributes from the people we're working with. And I think your business model is a slow burn model that over time, when you get it right, one day you'll probably be the subject line of a success story in my inbox, right? Even if you started today, in five years' time from now, you might have a great website portfolio. And just to put a point on it, one of the greatest things that rebranding has done for me was that it ended up me just having two assets. One is my personal website and two is my side project website, which you've always helped me with. It's going stronger than ever and I've actually got more clarity and focus and ability to develop that now that I've got less projects. So when you get clear on the pathway to it, that's when it all works out. Now, Matt, I'd love it if you could share with us how we could get on board your program if we're interested in that slow burn business model and we have the right mindset for it. Yeah, so if you're interested in either building or buying a portfolio of cash generating websites, that's what we do. You can go and check us out at the eBusiness Institute. Make sure you do our free masterclass um, because we just go through our whole strategy. Take you about 90 minutes. It could well change your life if you're interested in an alternative way of generating income. Uh, we've got students that do this full time, but also build up long term assets. We're about teaching people to build long term assets, like with your other side project website. You know, slow burn assets that are potentially worth six and seven figures, maybe maybe more. But yeah, check out e Business Institute and uh, sign up for our free masterclass. I think that's the best way to get to get a good feel. And also check out if you want role models of success. There's a number of James's students on our on our blog there who, we, who we've interviewed. There are. I don't, like, that's why I'm, I'm happy to partner with you guys and support uh, the promotion of it because I'm just hearing such great feedback. And it's good. Like from a business strategy, I like finding complementary partners who provide the thing that I don't. I don't do startups and I don't teach website building. And you guys are the specialists at that. So I love being able to recommend that when it's a good fit. And I uh, appreciate you coming along and sharing it. The, the last episode that got published that we had got such a great resonance as well. Like we're right on topic here and I, I um, hopefully you'll come back and share some more stuff in the future. We'll, we'll put a link in our show notes at episode 931 on jamesshramco.com. Matt, Rod, thank you so much uh, for being here. Yeah, thanks so much, James, for um, having me on today. It was awesome. <laughs> Love it. This is James Schramko.